am excited to be here with you today, to be able to bring our deeper segment into your home, into the place where you call home and where you love to learn more about God. Now, I challenge you, never settle for the least you can get from God, but always look to get the very most out of the Bible, out of what he said, but also out of your relationship with him. God wants a relationship with every person, every person on planet Earth, in fact, not just every Christian, but every person. And he's made a way for that through his son, Jesus Christ. And many people don't understand that. So today I want to share a little bit about that out of Acts chapter 10. And Acts chapter 10 is very interesting because it just gives a historical account of what happened in the nation of Israel at the time when Jesus had already gone to heaven, but he had some disciples there that were busy doing the same work that he did. In fact, in John chapter 14, 12, he said, if you will do the same things I did and even greater things shall you do because I go to the Father. Didn't make sense to them at the time, but then when the Holy Spirit came on them and, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and, and felt the difference, knew the boldness of God that was on the inside of them, experienced the life of God flowing through them, then they started to understand that God had a plan for them to revolutionize the world, really. And so they started off at home in Jerusalem and then spread out from there. In Acts chapter 10, I'm just going to read a couple of verses to, to, to focus us today. It says, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of what was called the Italian Regiment. It said he was a devout man and one who feared God with all his household, who gave alms generously to the people and prayed to God always. I, I want to define who that person was like. And and how we can relate to a person like this today. And if you read the rest of the chapter, you find out that God used Simon Peter, that's Peter, the one fisherman who put his foot in his mouth often, but after he was filled with the Holy Spirit and Jesus ascended to heaven, man, he became a powerful man of God, and God used him everywhere he went to impact the lives of people. So, so Peter's involved in this, in this story as well, and he was down in the area of Joppa, uh, camping out with a friend of his named Simon, also a Simon, who tanned uh, skins of animals. So he was known as Simon the Tanner. And then about Caesarea is actually about 40 kilometers up the coast. I've been there. I've traveled it by bus up there. It took us a little while by bus. Imagine it would take them a day and a half to travel between these two locations. And so God spoke to this, um, this man, uh, Cornelius, uh, a centurion actually sent an angel to speak to him. So let me talk to you about a devout man, a, 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 a man after uh, God just wanting the things of God. So Cornelius was a Roman soldier who had come up through the ranks, we understand, and had become a leader, not just a centurion that led a hundred, but he was above that. He was actually a captain of a, of a, a regiment called the Italian Regiment, and I'm told that there were often a thousand soldiers in those regiments. And that many of them would, would have been actually from Italy as he was. And it was a leader in that. So then he was a man of great power, great influence, a man of great authority that understood what authority was all about. You remember that centurion spoken of other, other places in the Bible. Well, this was like a boss of his. And so he knew about being under authority, but he also had a desire to come close to God. And so in, in the Roman Empire at that time, the Caesar was known as God. So, so the Caesars, Caesar Augustus was known as a God, but then they also had gods of wood and stone that they worshipped. But this man was different than most of the others around him in that he believed in God the Creator. He believed that a God... A supreme being, a God, must have created the earth, must have created humanity, must, it couldn't have just happened. It wasn't by gods of wood and stone. And so he started to pray to that God, not knowing who that God was, not knowing a name for the God, because it doesn't relate that, 
but just having a sensitive heart and every day praying to God, praying for whatever, I, I don't know, doesn't, the Bible doesn't tell us, but we speculate, praying for his family, for health in his family, praying for the same things that you would pray for as well, that they would have peace, even though they were the occupying force in the nation, that there would be peace there, that they would be able to function appropriately, that they do their jobs well, that their family, their children would have a future. All the same types of things that we would pray for, he was praying for. And God, God was recognizing those prayers, but he didn't let it stop there. You see, he was sensitive to God. He wanted to, wanted to be a, a man of God. And so, consequently, he took his, his faith in a God that was the creator of all humanity out into the streets and actually gave alms, gave food and clothing and gave finances to people in need. He provided for them, recognizing that they were just as created by God as he was. And so that's what was interesting about this man. I call him a good man. I think he is like many people alive today in our area, in your area, wherever you are. There are many good people around. And God looks for them. God recognizes them. People that pray to him, he hears prayers. And, and he wants to get through to them with the reality of, of who Jesus is. And so, so to me, it was very interesting that even though this was a Roman soldier, a, a leader, a captain, an influential man, a wealthy man, a man of status in the community, he was visibly a servant of God and wanting to be to the extent that he told his family. His family were also following God. They were also God-fearing. His servants, some were Jewish servants, some were non-Jewish servants. He shared that with them. He wanted them to be followers of God as well. So, so they were all there with him. And I'll read a little bit further down. And then it said uh, in verse number three, about the ninth hour, that's uh, three in the afternoon, uh, he was praying. He clearly saw a vision from of an angel of God coming and talking to him and said this, your prayers and your alms have come up for a memorial before God. And then he gave him instructions to send men down to Joppa to get Simon Peter and he will tell you what you must do. So even without clear direction, an angel spoke to him. Does God love good people? I believe he does. Does he love good people from all different backgrounds? Yes, I believe he does. He, he's no respecter of persons. Does God love people who may not even know him? They, they know there's a creator, so they worship a creator God, but they may even, even tuck other gods in. Yes, he loves them as well. He, in fact, God loves all people. Get that down inside your heart. He loves everyone. But friends, he loves everyone enough that when they're serious about God, when they're serious about knowing him, when they're praying, when they're doing things to bless others in the name of the God that they want to know, that those prayers, those actions come up to God as a memorial and he does something. He, he sends someone to impact their lives. In this case, he sent an angel. I, I hear testimonies in Iraq of angels coming and appearing to people at night and some even in the daytime and, and talking to them about Jesus and who he is and, and opening doors and introducing them to people that are followers of Jesus. I hear about the same thing in, in other countries, even Afghanistan, and, and I've even heard about it in Iran and some of the countries that are, that are more close to an op open presentation of the gospel. I hear about God sending angels. Isn't it wonderful that God is looking for people who have hungry hearts for him and who are sensitive and want to serve a living God even when they don't know him? And so God sent to Cornelius an angel and, and so Cornelius quickly followed the instructions and sent and, and got Peter and, and Peter had his own miraculous experience with God because it wasn't right for him to go to non-Jewish people. He was, he was a Jew and he understood only from a Jewish perspective what it was like to serve Jesus Christ. And, and yet now God was doing something brand new. He was bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ, the reality of a living savior 
the message of a Holy Spirit that wants to live inside of you and live through you. He was bringing it not just to more Jewish people, not just to sensitive hearted Jewish people, but he was bringing to people of all backgrounds and all races the message of Jesus Christ, good news, gospel message. And then he was helping them to receive it and be filled with the Holy Spirit, praying in other tongues, living out the good news with boldness, without fear. And so that's what happened. And down many verses later, I'll just flip down the page and, and, in the Bible. And, and, you know, when Peter got to his house, <laughs> it says and in verse 25, as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshiped him. But Peter said, stand up. I myself am also a man just like you. And he talked to them and he, he opened their eyes to who Jesus is and what Jesus did. And while they were there, while that good man, and he took time, he got all his family together. And then he got his, his household servants. And then he got many of the soldiers that were serving with him. I believe many of the commanders, the centurions that worked under him. I mean, they had a house for it. It could have been over 100 people there. The Bible doesn't delineate what it was. But as Peter was preaching the good news of Jesus Christ, as he was saying that Jesus of Nazareth, the one who came and he died and he rose again and he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil, as he was sharing Jesus Christ, something happened. They believed inside their heart that this Jesus was the one they'd been looking for. They put their faith in him. They started praising God spontaneously. I believe they lifted their hands. It says they became vocal. They started speaking loud enough that the others in the room heard them. Not only that, they started praying in other tongues. The Holy Spirit fell on them and they started to worship God right in the middle of Peter's sermon. They didn't wait for the end. They didn't wait for an altar call. They were hungry already for the living God. As soon as they heard, they received. This is what God is looking for in our day as well. So friend, I want to challenge you. I, I want to encourage you. I want you to be like Simon Peter. I want you to be receptive to God when it looks like it's something, wow, that they wouldn't receive. They wouldn't receive God. Look at them. Look at, they're heathen people. They're not following God. They're fighting against God. Don't put labels on everyone. God loves every person. And he may very well be working in their hearts before you even get there, like he was with Peter. They may, they may be good people like your neighbors. I want to challenge you. Go to good people, people that recognize that there is a God, but don't know who he is. They don't know Jesus. They don't know, they don't know how to get to him. They don't know how to receive him. And you, be like Peter. Come into their space at their invite and share Jesus with them. Love them, care for them, tell them how much you appreciate their openness to God, their, their willingness to listen to God, how much you, you, you see how they care for people around, just like Cornelius did. And I believe, friends, God will soften their hearts and you will see people accept Jesus. You may see some filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in other tongues. You will see God use you, not just on a Sunday, but other days of the week. So I want to encourage you with this. God is looking for good people, that he can come. People who are wanting to please him. People who are open to hear. He's preparing hearts all around you. And now he's putting boldness within you so that you'll share his good news, simple message. Jesus loves everyone. God loves everyone. But Jesus died to make a way to God for every person. And all we have to do is believe in our heart that Jesus actually died for us to take away sin. What is that sin? It's separation between you and God. The greatest sin is, is not not public out exterior sins the greatest sin my friend is not recognizing jesus as lord of lords and king of kings that's the biggest one and that's the one that god is dealing with in the day that we're alive in and that's the one that i believe a good man one that you know will open his heart to and you'll be able to share and just lead him in a simple prayer and see god use you to bring many to christ 
So God bless you. Keep going deeper in the Word of God. Understand, it's not to expand our mind. It's to fill our hearts to overflowing so it pours out to touch the lives of others. That's why we teach deeper in the Bible each and every week. So come back and join us again. God bless you.